Well, John, Happy New Year. And let me be one of the first to congratulate you on becoming a partner with KPMG in the UK. Thanks, Rodney. It's a, um, yeah, it's a huge privilege. I started with the firm as a graduate, so to kind of make partner, you know, I'm absolutely delighted about it. And I have the, you know, I get to work with some absolutely fantastic clients. So it's brilliant news. Well, well done and well deserved. And talking about working with fantastic clients, there was a whole slew of stuff coming out on UK taxes over the Christmas break. Just a lot of stuff. When you talk with clients, what's top of mind in those discussions? You're right, Rodney. I mean, if you think about the amount of change in the fiscal environment over the past sort of five or six years, it's it's actually slightly dizzying. And, you know, what we're really engaging our clients in is taking a step back and thinking about their corporate legal holding structures and whether they're actually, you know, fit for purpose and robust. Mm -hmm. I think that's really the key thing that's sort of top of mind at the moment with our clients. So, you know, one of the things that we're spending a lot of time on is actually running workshops where we're giving our clients that space, you know, to actually take a couple of hours out of their busy day to day to be in a room with their trusted advisors to really you know, go through each component of their legal corporate structure. And that's quite a broad term, right? So by that, I mean, not just your legal holding structure, but also your external, you know, your internal financing, you know, what your IP arrangements look like, and also your treasury, and really you know, challenge each component and see whether it really sort of stands up to all the legislation that has come down the track in the past couple of years. And then it's kind of performing a gap analysis. So understanding, you know, whether the, you know, what the client's priorities and objectives are, and then whether their structure is really meeting those and helping them kind of identify opportunities to improve. Well, it's interesting because with all these changes, it's hard enough just for people to focus on operating their business, let alone complying with these and understanding how to to change in a new world on a dime. Yeah, and I think that's right. And I think as tax advisors, sometimes we forget how how difficult it is actually for our clients to take that step back and think strategically about their structures from a long-term view rather than just kind of firefighting and what the next request is that's coming through the door. So, I mean, we've had some great feedback from our clients so far and it can really help them actually manage their, you know, senior stakeholders because as we know, tax is now a C-suite issue. So actually having those early conversations, you can go to the CFO and when they ask, you know, have you really kicked the tires? You can say, yes, and this is what we've done and this is our thinking. You know, so I think it's really good for senior stakeholder management as well. Actually, that's a really good point. Ele- elevating the discussion up into like a boardroom level type discussion. Exactly, exactly. And where, and with the sort of the trend in sort of tax rates where they're going over the next couple of years, you know, there's a lot of focus on this and C-suite individuals are going to need to understand these mm. rules so they can articulate their impact to the capital markets who are going to have a lot of you know, interest in where this is all heading. Interesting. And you just mentioned about where things are going. So let me put you on the spot and do some admittedly unscientific crystal ball gazing. So as you sort of talk to folk about where things are going, where are things going in your mind, John? Well, I I think now that we've had the, well, at least with Pillar 2, we've had the Pillar 2 rules, and that's been a, you know, an extremely kind of long process. I think we're kind of reaching the sort of the top of the mountain, if you like, mm. in terms of sort of international tax changes. Um, and there might be some additional kind of tax measures which get brought in as a result of COVID and the pandemic. But really, I think the next phase is going to be around public disclosure, like transparency. We've obviously had sort of public um, you know, country by country reporting, you know, which was brought in back, back in as part of BEPS 1. But really, I think there's going to be an increased push for the public to have visibility over corporates tax affairs, you know, it, particularly in an environment where corporates have obtained a lot of support from governments, you know, as a result of the pandemic. So I think that's definitely coming down the track. So again, when you're undertaking these workshops, you know, standing back and thinking, well, what would happen if the public had access to this mm. information? How would we explain it? Are we comfortable with what we've got in place. Uh, and yeah, sort of, I think taking that view, because it's very easy, you know, one of the one of the real traps, I think, when we think about corporate structures is to apply 
you know, a historic lens. You know, mm. it, oh, it worked in the past, it was fine, you know, and we've never had a challenge. But what you always find, particularly when you do a lot in the dispute space, is you know, what you thought was fine at the time, you know, in a couple of years down the track, actually can look very bad. And so, you know, really sort of thinking forward and being very cognizant of how you know societal norms can change, how mm. the tax landscape can change, and how sort of politics can change. I think you know it's it's there's a lot to think about. So that's a really interesting point to end on, John. That thought of, I mean, there's really nothing to hide, but just how do you articulate what you're actually doing and yeah, have a that's, forward that's, mindset? That's, yeah. that's exactly right. I mean, there's nothing nefarious going on. It's just like, well, does you know, how would you explain this and create a, you know a clear and compelling narrative which makes sense? Well, that's really interesting, John. So first of all, there's a slew of stuff coming out of the UK on ongoing change. And then how do, and then the fact that people are thinking about, look, uh, is our structure fit for purpose? And then a mind to the future. And will it be future fit for the purpose and stress testing that? I can only imagine this is keeping you super busy, John. Yeah, no, it's an exciting time. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next 12 months and seeing what it brings. Well, that's a great note to end on. And let me end on this. Again, congratulations on Making Partner. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you in person when we're traveling cross-border again. Super. Thanks a lot, Rodney. Appreciate it.